friends welcome to another session of acca f1 this chapter is headed as the business environment it's a very long chapter which includes lot of different concepts so we shall be breaking this particular chapter into multiple sessions the current session will discuss what is the business environment how does it get impacted by some external factors we shall be discussing something called pestel and also the legal and political framework will be discussed in this session so the main purpose of this session is to discuss how business environment gets impacted by external factors there are different different factors which impacts the organization some could be political and legal some could be social and demographic technological environmental and competitive factor so we shall be discussing all those factors in a while now we have understood what is business how organizations work and we also understood that organizations cannot work in isolation they are connected with the external environment as well so they do get impacted with external environment and there are lot of factors which impacts the business in a various way so basically we have to understood those factors in order to understand their impact on the organization there's something called johnson and scholes approach to environmental analysis they try to find out how business gets impacted by environment when we say environment when we say environment it does not just mean the typical environment as to the nature environment here means all the factors which impacts the organization so this approach says how to go about environmental analysis so it has about five steps which we have to understand step number 1 you have to assess what is the nature of environment sometime your environment may be static sometime it may be dynamic so you have to understand whether it is changing or it is not changing then you have to understand those factor which impacts the organization it could be what they have impacted in the past or it could be in the future so we need to understand from the external environment what are the factors which can be impacted or which can impact our organization step number 3 you have to do a structural analysis so you need to understand what are the key forces which creates the environment okay step number 4 you need to understand what's the organization's position in relation to other organization so when we are talking about competition where does our organization stand when it comes to other companies other organizations that step number 4 step number 5 talks about threats not every time your environment the external environment may be friendly so what are the threats and what are the opportunities which those environment is giving you we will also understand this factor more in the swot analysis but here we will understand what are the threats what are the opportunity which your environment gives you so all these five steps are involved in this approach of environmental analysis if you look at this picture the environment could be global environment could be local when we say global that means most of the organizations do have global business these days we do have multinational environment so mnc's do operate in multiple countries so that's a global organization which organizations get exposed to local whichever country they are based at they, they are also get impacted by their local environment so that is also a point to be considered the generic economic factor which includes macro and micro factor which we'll understand more in the economic section how those macro and micro factors impact the organization comes under general task Now, if you look at this picture, you will see lot of factors which are impacting the 
organization. So organization comes in the mid and all those factors are around it. Now let's try to understand those factors one by one. This is called pestel analysis. So P stands for political factor, E economics, S social, T technological, E environmental or ecological and L stands for legal. So these six factors you need to understand in pestel. Political, economic, social, technological, environmental and legal. Every factor has its own role to play in our organization. So we'll be understanding all those factors one by one. Let's talk about political environment. We understand that every country has its own political situation. Some countries are very liberal, some are having their own policies, some are really conservative. So every country has their own political environment. It's not just about politics. Even companies do get impacted by political environment. For example, in some countries, government intervene too much in the organizations. There could be some liberal countries where governments generally do not interfere in the company's operations. So the degree of government intervention is one of the factors which gets impacted with political environment. Some countries have a lot of instability politically. They do not have a constructive government or political parties. Now that also impacts organization. Organizations always have risky future. They don't know whether they can survive in that country or they can't. Policy direction. There may be certain governments who may be very very friendly to multinational environment. Some may not. Some con political party may be a uh, Promoting some kind of organizations and others may not be encouraged. So all those policies can also be impacted largely with political environment. So when we talk about P part, P part is very important for us to understand because they impact an organizations to a larger extent. So as we have understood, the degree of intervention, policies, political risk, stability, all those factors comes with the political environment. Now, some more portion on the political side. For example, a company is thinking about capacity expansion. Capacity expansion means they want to have larger operations, increase the production. Then they have to see whether the government or the political parties is giving them some kind of tax benefits or not. In some countries, in some government, provide a lot of subsidies, tax benefits. Now that encourages the companies to expand. The demand is also a factor which gets impacted. For example, if government is working more on the infrastructure development part, those kind of organization will be promoted. Emerging industries, there could be certain political parties who really promote the emerging industries such as handicraft and so on. So that is another factor. Entry barriers, exit barriers. In some countries, the government do not want an outsider to come and have their operation. In those countries, there could be a lot of entry barriers. Entry barriers does not literally mean they are going to put some kind of barrier. So they decide the quotas, they increase the import and export duty, tariffs, all these could be the way entry barriers will be done. So import Duty, if it will be increased, a country cannot have import from outside. It will be discouraged. So all those can become entry barriers. Competition. Sometimes government may have their own policy related to competitive environment. So it could be related to purchasing decisions, regulation and control and so on. For example, in the context of say India. So Indian railway has a monopoly. Nobody else can operate the trains. Now that is where it is entirely depends how government wants it to be. Some time government have a sole sourcing. So that means they purchase everything from one particular source. Sometimes they may not. So all these are 
largely impacted by government decisions. Some more portion when we look at international trade part or international policies part, the we have European Union, we have World Trade Organizations, we have OECD, which is Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. So these are primarily related to the political influence. Now, when we have understood the political factor, it is important for us to understand the legal factor also. So when we talk about PESTEL, we talk about P portion, and now we are talking about L portion, which is legal. A company cannot work in isolation. So they have a lot of legal implication which starts with the contract. An employer and employee, how do they get tied up with each other? Through a legal contract, what we call appointment letter. So that means legal environment are also very important for organization. And if legal environment is friendly to the organization maybe organization can grow better so now let's understand the legal framework the legal framework comes from the parliamentary legislation the international body the treaty between or among the countries official regulation government regulations and so on now what could be the major laws which can be covered here it includes employment law health and safety, data protection, and consumer protection. So let's talk about all four factors one by one. Let's talk about employees framework first. As we discussed, starting from the day when employees join the company, the legal framework comes into picture. The appointment letter is a legal document. The termination of employment is a legal process. Anything which is related to health and safety at the workplace comes under legal framework. The recruitment process, equal opportunities, all these comes under legal framework. An employee cannot be terminated with unfair means. Unfair means something which is not fair. That is why every country has employed law. Those employment related laws takes care of the all portion related to employment, which includes their retirement, resignation, dismissal and redundancy. Retirement when people get retired once they cross certain age. Resignation when they willfully leave the job. Dismissal when they are they have been asked to leave the company or they have been dismissed from the job and redundancy when company close down the operations maybe permanently or may they may be closing down operation at one particular site and that is what we call redundancy so all these could be the reason why employment can be terminated now dismissal can be of two type wrongful and unfair now let's understand how these two are different Whenever employer has breached the terms of the contract, that is considered as wrongful dismissal. For example, when me as an employee signed a contract with employer, the clause was that I will be given three months notice before I will be dismissed from the job. When, but employer has broken those conditions, they have asked me to leave tomorrow itself. Now that's called wrongful dismissal. Unfair dismissal when the employee has been dismissed on the wrong grounds. For example, if somebody is suffering from say some disease and employer says that you have to leave the job. Even if it is not impacting the productivity of employee considered as unfair dismissal. If somebody has been dismissed due to different uh, some, some kind of uh, uh, unfair treatment related to gender or maybe race all this comes under unfair dismissal so in those cases so that's the difference between unfair dismissal and wrongful dismissal 
so that is where when it comes to wrongful or unfair dismissal the legal portion comes into picture so every employee is been protected with employment acts every country has their own labor laws then labor laws can protect the dismissal part of employees then comes data protection and security other than labor laws there could be lot of other legal factors which comes into picture one of them is related to data protection and security these days what is important in a company is data when employee goes out they they generally don't carry any asset from the company they can't steal anything but what can be compromised is the data so the most important portion of a company now is data only and it is important to protect the data and maintain the security of data so that is where first part comes under privacy privacy the right of the individual to control the use of information about him or her including information about financial status health and lifestyle so data protection not only protect the data of organization but your personal data also the personal data include your bank information credit card information uh, your personal status your health history lifestyle history all these comes under data protection act in uk the data protection act 1998 comes into picture which prevent the unfair use or wrongful use of data which covered under privacy act so that where legal portion comes into picture even employer cannot misuse the data of employee because that's their private data now how why we need to be concerned about data protection as we discuss it's a very very important uh, aspect of all our lives be it organization or you as an individual so the key risk which may be impacting the data could be the human error for example you lost your wallet and with this you have lost all your identity proof and everything so that can be one of the challenge you lost your credit card debit card could be human error could be technical malfunction which includes your hacking of your data and there are these days lot of different identity theft procedures are there so that can be one of the way deliberate or malicious action where somebody wanted to steal your data and hacking as we discussed now what are the data protection principle the personal data any data which is about person health finance anything which comes under privacy act considered as a personal data but a data about other organization is not considered as a personal data all right so you need to understand what is the meaning of personal data it is about a person an individual who can be the data user organizations individual who have a control of these personal data can be called data users for example bank has your personal data they do have detail about your credit card debit cards bank details and so on and data subject is an individual whose data is with the user so the person whose data is there we call them data subject now how to protect the data what are the principles which governs the data protection so the personal data needs to be very uh, you know maintained with confidentiality there has to be very fair processing and only that processing should be done which is required so bank has your personal data for some other reasons so that means they should not use it for some other purpose the data should be obtained in a lawful manner it should not be stolen or hacked the data should be adequate and relevant the person should not have too much personal data about someone else so all those principle should be kept in mind when it comes to data protection now we have understood two legal aspect which was related to labor laws and then we discussed something related data protection now talk let's talk about health and safety when employee work in organization the safety and health of those employee should be the concern of employer 
for example when employee work in mines now that is a very risky so employer needs to make sure they are safe and secured people who work in plant with machineries employer needs to make sure that machineries are proper and so that all kind of accidents should be avoided and if anything happens to employees at workplace employer should give them compensation so all this comes under health and safety acts so employer needs to meet their legal obligations when it comes to health and safety they need to minimize the risk of accidents they need to minimize the risk of any kind of leap litigations also all this comes under health and safety act now what is employee's duty when it comes to health and safety they have to take care of themselves and the others too they should not interfere with the machinery machineries end of the day can be risky it's a machine end of the day so employee needs to make sure that they use it safely and if they find any kind of problem with the machinery they should report it on a very timely basis any kind of situation which they consider as potentially dangerous should be reported to the employer and the necessary action should be taken the health and safety policy has some principles which includes the statement of principle as to what will be the inclusion in this policy what will be the details of the safety procedures how will the compliance with the law will be done what will be the instruction on equipment use and what will be the training requirements all these parts should be covered under health and safety policy if you look at this picture you will understand what are the potential danger here you can see the wires on floor which is definitely not safe this lady is having hot tea or some drink which is again seems dangerous because she is carrying something or there are a lot of wires now do you consider this is a safety environment if you look at this gentleman also doesn't seem to uh safe as a health and safety that he is standing on the chair trying to put something say some laptop or some computer kind of thing so overall this picture does not seem very safe situation for a business so some things which can be covered which includes frayed carpets trailing leads telephone cable standing on chairs all these can be very very risky and those things should be avoided then comes contract when we talk about legal aspect it is important for us to understand the contracts as well so contract is a legal agreement between two parties buyer and seller and the three elements which are must for a contract which includes consideration if i am a buyer and you are a seller there has to be some kind of consideration involved consideration does not literally mean money so if i am teaching you you are paying me services it's a contract if i am giving you a mobile phone you are giving me a pen it's also a contract okay so any kind of contract where consideration is involved considered as contract but the consideration should be legal if i am giving you something and in return you are giving me some illegal thing say drugs now that is not considered as consideration the consideration needs to be legal the second thing which is very important is offer and acceptance one of the party need to offer and the other party need to accept so if i am selling my mobile phone offer is being given to you by me that i want to sell acceptance is given by you where you said yes we will accept it unless these two portions are done contract cannot be done and the third is intention both the party should have intention to make it legally enforceable if those intentions are missing we do not call it contract so when a mother gives something to the kids that is not considered as contract 
because the intention was never to make it legally binding. But when a buyer and seller do it commercially, the intentions are involved. So this is considered as intention. Now we have understood three portion consideration, offer and acceptance and intention. When you go for TV purchase, do you consider as a contract? Yes. There is a legal consideration involved. There is an offer by seller, acceptance by buyer and intention to make it legally binding. So this is how contracts work. So look at this portion. All three portions are given. Now with this, we have understood first two parts of Peston. We understood how business organizations get impacted by external environment and we also understood that there are two portions involved political and legal. So in legal we understood different kind of contracts, data protection, health and safety, contract and employment laws and in political we understood how political environment impacts an organization. So with this session we will be concentrating on those two factors and in our videos ahead, we will be discussing rest the topics. So that is all about this topic where we understood two portion P and L, political and legal side. That is all for this session and let us catch up with the new video and where we will discuss the rest topics ahead. Thank you so much.